moment when it's like I can't remember which button it is. So that's that's absolutely fine. Over to you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for uh, inviting me for this seminar. I'll be more talking about my experiences and the way uh, I have handled it, the data insights for the tickets uh, in my project. So I work for Atos, like uh, Atos is a global company and it's, it's a large company. We have, we're working with large customers with, uh, on a service delivery model. So we are getting around maybe 10,000 tickets data every day of that sort. So we are looking at a huge number of tickets coming to us and we have large teams uh, managing those tickets. Uh, so here I'm going to give you more insights on how, how we are using our own uh, uh, our own analytics and how the prediction models and how it is improving my service delivery managers uh, to improve their efficiencies. So these are the perpetual issues of any service delivery managers. Uh, however, whatever the tools that uh, we have in the previous sessions, we talked about a lot of automations, AI, machine learning, although all those tools are there still the service desk manager who is always uh, juggling with so many tasks uh, and facing issues like missed SLAs, they are high volume of tickets coming up, high backlog coming up, difficult to deliver on time. There are continuously change in the tools and technologies. The new tools are coming and the entire team has to cope with those tools. Uh, there is a attrition. There are customer ex escalations and there are low efficiency and low productivity due to attrition or maybe the skill levels of the agents. Uh, the knowledge management becomes a key issues and the kind of best practices are not managed. So in spite of multiple tools that the service delivery managers have, uh, they, they are still juggling with so many issues and there are always uh, missed SLAs and customer dissatisfaction and we are trying to improve the customer satisfaction along with we definitely have a cost pressure so that we have to meet our uh, costing uh, targets. So we have the service delivery managers have so many tools available currently like they are, there is automatic ticket creation, tickets of auto assignments, there are chatbots, there are automatic ticket automations, they switch to text, they are, they are tools to understand customer emotions. So there are so many tools available already so that that's helping them sometimes to improve their efficiencies. However, it's not giving them the real insight into the data. So what I'm talking about today is about how the historical data will help them, how the historical data will help the service delivery manager so that they can improve their team's efficiency and meet the customer targets. So history definitely helps. So we are going to climb on the pile of historical data and take a sneak peek into future. Uh, so with the historical data, all the all the ticketing tools like today's sophisticated ticket ticketing tools, they, they provide all the historical data and they, they provide some dashboards also. However, uh, the data science and application of data science and data analytics on that historical data is what I'm going to talk about and how the data analytics and predictive model is giving a deeper insights into the data so that the service delivery managers can take proper actions and meet their SLAs. So where the historical data helps like all these tools which I talked about like they are helping the customer helping the team to solve the current ticket problems and meet their SLAs, but it's not giving you them diagnostic action or it, it is not giving you some more deeper insight. And if they have this kind of deeper insight based on the historical data, they will be able to flourish uh, better and they will be having maybe better work life balance, if I can say. Uh, so with the historical data, obviously it's, it's the simple thing that they will be predict uh, the ticket volume 10, predict the major incidents because major incidents is one of the cause of customer dissatisfaction and it, it really impacts a lot of services. So if they are able to predict the major incidents, predict the ticket volumes, how the tickets are coming, what kind of ticket anomalies there, they, they can use, uh, they can do clustering, uh, they can use classification of the tickets, uh, different types of alerts and reminders, 
they can prepare a recommended ticket queue so that they can prioritize the ticket and obviously it will come to automatic ticket allocation automatic ticket allocation has to based on the historical data you cannot just just create automatic ticket allocation it can automate ticket to anybody so i'll tell you how queuing theory can be used for automatic ticket allocation So here I, I have actually, pardon, there is a lot of text on the screen. However, these are all possible use cases that uh, that anybody can implement based on the ticket data, the historical ticket data that uh, an organization can gather based on their their own their own input. So it's it's a it's a model based on their own data. So it's definitely going to fit their fit fit their requirements. Uh, so it will start right from the beginning of the project before we project begin, like we are doing the effort estimation, even the costing uh, at the initial costing. So data analytics or ticket analytics can help right from the beginning of the project till you move to the steady state. So at the, at the time of transition, it will help you to get data insights into various ticket volumetrics to understand the scope of the work. It will help them to do the effort estimation, how uh, how they will, uh, what kind of efforts are required and that can be done for, that can be used for capacity management as well as that can be used for uh, costing. There are different time trains. The, these time graphs can help them to schedule the things. Geographical application heat maps will help them to kind of uh, spread the, uh, understand the spread across the application and across geography so they can manage the team. Here I'm thinking like, here I'm showing that the teams, it's, it's really big project, maybe more than 10,000 tickets a day. So there are around 500, 600, or maybe 1,000 agents rolling the problem across geographies. So these kind of insights would definitely help here and a small insight can make a big impact. Uh, when they move to it, like uh, obviously, objective of any service delivery manager is to improve the operational efficiencies and uh, the reduced resolution time. So in the operational efficiency, they can do ticket aging analysis, uh, ticket travel journey to reduce the ping pongs. Uh, so, but these actions, like although you say that these are the things which are available, it's not very high fighting, like not going to machine learning and AI. But based on my experience, even this much can, uh, if you do this much on, on the real data, it can really add value to the teams. Uh, automation, like automation are possible, but the analytics should be used to identify opportunities for automation, which will yield high, high ROI. Uh, automation is expensive, it doesn't come, it, it is costly. So you have to find out opportunities where automation would lead to high ROI. I have, by, with my experience, some of the where automation is done, then the, those kind of tickets have actually stopped coming in. Uh, so that automation was actually not running because there are no opportunity to run that automation. Uh, so data analytics should be used to properly identify the uh, opportunities, which part of the process can be automated uh, so that it will yield ROI. Uh, backlog. Backlog is one of the perpetual problem of any service delivery manager. There is too much of backlog that gets piled up because of various reasons. Uh, so if you can do further backlog analytics, it will help you to uh, ensure that your SLAs are met. Ticket distribution, SLA analysis, these are some common things which should be done uh, uh, to help them uh, to identify the root cause of the problem and so that they can identify the problem and solve the issues. Uh, knowledge gaps, this is one of the important aspects uh, that ticketing analytics has helped us to find out where is the knowledge gap. Like there are a team of 500 agents working and then if there is some knowledge gap, then it will impact the re resolution time. And there is always some knowledge gaps we, that can be identified and your training plan to be improved. And once we do that, we can see the significant impact of that on your, on your SLAs and on your resolution time. As well as reduction of resolution time, uh, we want to understand which are the attributes that are causing high resolution time. So analytics can help you to identify those attributes uh, which are uh, impacting the resolution time. Root cause analysis, obviously, we can do uh, alerts like analytics and help of setting alert rules like alerts can be set by any uh, any ticketing tool. 
However, analytics will set will help you. The data analytics based on the historical data is supposed to help you to set rules for those alerts. Otherwise, there will be too many alerts or too less alerts, uh, which are actually not happening. So analytics based on the historical data will help you to set rules for those alerts. Training plans, obviously, if you are if you are able to identify the knowledge gap, you will be able to maybe give just as much training that is required for the trainer uh, for the agents to solve the tickets ticket allocation like how the tickets to be allocated so that you can balance the workload so here also we can use uh, data analytics text and sentiment analytics are uh, obviously now there are a lot of tools available to do the natural language processing and uh, uh, to look at uh, you know, topic modeling sentiment analysis so those kind of analysis can help us to really derive some deeper insight into the data and what kind of uh, work that is happening as far as the prediction uh, models are concerned this is like we are going on a little bit on advanced analytics where we are able to predict uh, the ticket volume, predict the time required to do and predict the estimated estimation of effort. So I can plan for next quarter or next year what kind of team I will have based on the prediction on my own historical data. Therefore, my prediction would be more correct than making an educated guess. Uh, work demand prediction, obviously, it is the same as the prediction models. Proactive problem management, this is one of the key areas that actually helped us a lot. Uh, based on the analytics, we could find out certain problems, certain problems that has to be resolved. And when we implemented that problems that could have raised the, some change request for the application that we are developing, uh, we could solve those problems. We could identify those problems based on the analytics. And when we solve that problem, uh, some kind of tickets actually got reduced. So that kind of tickets. So our ticket volume got reduced because we could identify a problem proactively based on the analytics. Uh, queuing theory, uh, it's the mathematical model you must be knowing. I'll talk about it in, in my later slide about queuing theory. So let's talk about a little bit on advanced analytics and I'm sharing examples from my own project and the, from my own experience that we have done. So obviously analytics can be used for comparisons and classification. So these are the common geographical graphs that are available. So you can focus, uh, this will decide on which areas I should be focusing on and maybe the, the other graphs can help you to compare between applications uh, and between geographies, applications, SLA met, SLA not met, various teams. So those kind of comparisons can be done and based on the comparisons, action can be derived so that you improve your SLAs. These are simple, simple dashboards which you can see everywhere. So here if you can see it's like business as usual, things are not moving. Uh, so either if I have to bend this chart, then I have to take a lot of uh, lot of efforts to bend this chart. Here you can see that the numbers are quite high, uh, and there will be uh, uh, if you have to really bend the chart below or move the chart up, you have to make significant amount of effort is required. Uh, so looking at this kind of uh, graphs and this kind of trends, uh, we can help. Uh, the there are the, the teams can took a correct a diagnostic action for service improvement. So here it's it's uh, only importance is like it's my data, my project, uh, my customer. Uh, so therefore this becomes this trend becomes important. It's like my ECG. If something goes wrong in my ECG, it's an issue. Otherwise, it's just looking some line graphs. So these patterns and trends becomes very important when I'm looking at the data that I am focusing to. So there are various options available so that I can drill down to my, my chart instead of looking at the overall global picture. SLA, not meeting SLAs is one of the common for service desk managers. Like so most of the time we don't miss some of the SLAs. So here, uh, the deep dive analysis of the SLAs which are not met and then it's giving the list of the tickets 
which are causing these uh, not S SLAs met, so that team can actually proactively focus and ensure that the team uh, the SLAs are met. So these SLAs are like done as of today and maybe as of yesterday, so that team can take yesterday like today team can take action so that tomorrow's SLAs are met. So this kind of analysis and and with with the current and the latest real time data has really helped our team to meet their SLAs. Time series analysis, like this is a machine learning model, which we can talk about, about time series. You can use ARIMA uh, model, uh, where we can predict uh, what is going to happen in next quarter, how much volume of the ticket I should expect ne next quarter, what should be my capacity of the next quarter. And here also we can apply various parameters so that I can focus, every manager can focus their, their area like, European manager can focus on Europe, US manager can focus in uh, in the US area so that the things would change, things would slightly change depending on the geographical area or maybe the application that they are working on. Uh, Indian managers can focus on somewhere else. So depending on that, everybody would get their own actions based on time series analysis. And these models are trained and tested based on the historical data and got published only after the accuracy of the models are checked. So such kind of models are helping them to predict things further, like look at uh, planning things further, understanding, uh, understanding or the predictions based on their historical data. Regression model can be used to estimate customer satisfaction, what kind of customer satisfaction that we are expecting and which, which driver that we can actually, which lever we can use so that our customer satisfaction is improved. Uh, text analytics here, what we call it like text analytics or the textual data that is uh, captured in the in the ticketing tool is typically not used that much, but now the tools are coming up. Uh, we have natural language processing, we have to topic modeling, sensitivity analysis. So all those tools have become proper now. Here also, now we have focused on my, my ticket and then I'm capturing all the data, all the textual data, uh, the description of the ticket, because that carries a lot of information. Uh, and what kind of actions that they are taken. So all those informations, is, uh, it can be captured here, processed here, so that we get some different kind of insights. And here, this will definitely help uh, to reveal some deeper insights, to identify the knowledge gaps, to understand what kind of tickets that we are getting, so that we can improve our training plan, so that it, it, it will have an impact on the resolution time. If you're using chatbots, what are the rules for chatbots? Because chatbots to be configured, it, it doesn't get automatically configured. So there has to be a lot of study done before we configure the chatbots. So that those rules that we configure should be based on the analysis of historical data. So if you go to advanced analytics, is it, again here, every time you should be talking about personalizing the experiences. If you don't personalize experiences, it become one fancy dashboard, which I just look and I say, okay, it is good. And then, and that ends there. But if you want the service delivery managers or even the operations managers to derive actions and implement the actions, then only you will be able to see the significant impact on your SLAs. So everywhere you should be thinking about how you can give a personalized experience so that I can see my actions, I can see my dashboard for my country, my application, my module, which are the SLAs that I have missed. My big look. Globally, we might have met the SLAs, but maybe at my level, I have missed certain SLAs. So what are the my actions that are coming to it? So the dashboard should be designed or the anal analysis should be designed in such a way that it not only gives the overall view, it has to give the overall view, which will help management to do strategic decisions and it will help in the maybe, maybe the contract renewal or the costing further for the uh, new projects. Uh, it will also give, it should be also give specific operational actions uh, to the operations team so that they can take that action, implement that action and close that ticket. 
So there's a lot of analysis that we have done that we are saying that go to this machine and go do this much on that uh, this machine to close that um, close that ticket. Uh, so we can go up to a grassroots level uh, so that it gives uh, operation team the action so that it improves the overall efficiency. We have also done something uh, like anomaly detection, like which tickets are actually higher resolution time, find out the attributes of the tickets which are why uh, with, with higher resolution time and take action separately on that. Uh, the ticket journey, the ping pong analysis, which uh, typically all the uh, software ticketing tool does provide. But here we are giving a different view how the tickets are changing hands. So here, if you can see each color, that means the ticket is changing hands. Uh, uh, so if the tickets are changing hands at multiple times, there has to be some control. Uh, so ticketing analytics will help you why the tickets are changing hands and it will help in improving the process, not only for that ticket, but it, it will help. It will give some diagnostic action so that you can do about how do we improve the process because uh, the process becomes quite complex because the tools and the technologies that are uh, complex and the tickets we are resolving, they are not simple tickets. There will be a complex tickets and there are certain various agencies would be involved to solve that particular ticket. Uh, so if there is too many hands changing, maybe there are some, uh, sometimes we have done that there are some contractual SLAs are changed because of the analysis that we are doing, because it is not possible to meet that SLAs and we could convince the customer that, yes, for this particular ticket type, this SLA that you have agreed cannot be, cannot work because of these reasons. So you will be able to convince the customer better. You will be having an upper hand with the customer if you are properly doing your historical analysis. And this data analytics helps in that way. Here we have used like queuing theory is one of the things that should be used uh, for all service desk. It is uh, not, not many tools, like as far as my knowledge, not many tools just gives this, uh, uh, gives, applies this uh, queuing theory. Uh, this is an old mathematical model. It's nothing new about it. It's the mathematical model. It's quite proven and it works. But how do we apply to our, our data? How do we apply queuing theory to my data? So here there is one simple thing we have applied, like kind of a weighted average with all our SLAs and I'm giving them the priority how should how should i prioritize the ticket so if you can see this particular ticket number uh this q weight is high that means this particular ticket has to be resolved on priority so that we meet our own slas so here maybe we are generating alerts with the with the ticket queues so that a person actually gets uh gets an alert that he or she has to resolve this ticket on priority so that we meet slas so this kind of queue and it will become it can become my queue when I apply certain filters. So this will give you my priority list and if my list is clean, I should be happy about it. Uh, but this typically doesn't happen when you are working with so many tickets at the same time. So this is one of the very important or very useful thing that we have implemented and we found that this has really helped. Uh, us to meet SLAs and maybe somewhere we are able to uh, kind of uh, penalties that we have to have like those penalties also have stopped because we met our SLAs using such kind of analytics. If you look at queuing theory, what we should do like uh, we have we have ticket data and we have agent data like how many agents are there and what are their skills. And here we have the ticketing queues, the ticket, uh, ticket uh, the queue tickets are coming uh, uh, in a queue and they are, they, there could be a long queue here. So we can apply a queuing theory so that we can meet, we can mix all this together and we can have a mathematical model. So based on the historical data, the queuing theory will decide uh, which ticket should go to which agent and we'll also check the availability and we can also predict the queue length and we should ensure the operational efficiency. Uh, so uh, I would recommend like you should start using queuing theory uh, for your own data so that 
lot of things can get streamlined based on the queuing theory and this is a mathematical model that has actually proved uh, very good for the service disk analysis. So in today's world, ticket analytics is a differentiator, data analytics, and that that the deeper insights and the deep, different kind of out-of-box ideas it can it can deliver. It can give some different uh, eureka impact on on the service desk manager. Some new ideas can be generated based on looking at your own historical data. So organizations cannot afford of uh, not having analytics. And there are significant number of studies that deliver uh, that del uh, that demonstrate that there is so increase in operational efficiencies like you, the data data analytics helps you to have actions which would help you to increase your operational e efficiencies overcome attrition because attrition is given in service desk industry uh, so if if you are able to overcome the attrition, your process has to be properly defined and your, if your process has to be properly optimized, the data analytics will help you to optimize the process. It will help you to reduce cost and obviously if you are able to reduce cost and improve your efficiencies, uh, you will meet your SLA and that would obviously enhance your customer satisfaction. So based on the last few years that we are doing ticket analytics on the real data, it has definitely delivered a good ROI uh, for us uh, and we could help our customers and our SLAs are met and our customers are happy. So these are the benefits that we should get. Uh, so that's it from my side and it will definitely impact on my cost reduce cost and increase revenue that's what the benefits we can demonstrate by using analytics and based on the ticket data so thank you that's great thank you very much indeed and uh, that was really 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 interesting actually thank you for that in-depth um sort of uh case study there which is great um we've got a couple of questions that have come through we, we are running out of time but what we're going to do right guys we're going to we're going to push on through a break all right if anybody wants to go um you know and, and have a rest uh, by all means do now and then we'll we'll carry on we'll carry on sort of with with the questioning so there's one question i've got i've got one myself actually um there is one question from mohammed who asks will the q theory not conflict with the ticket priorities so I'm assuming they all work together, and I don't. I'd be honest. I'm, I I don't know much about Q theory, but I am going to have a little look at that to see see what what that is. But is there any conflict between that that uh, that theory and um, uh, and so priorities? No, queuing theory takes care of all those things. Like when you are mm -hmm. making the model, queuing theory would take about your priorities. Uh, your availability so all those parameters it considers and depending on that it generates the queue it will not come if you're configured the queuing theory properly so it, so it will take care of all the model all the parameters that are required awesome and uh, then uh, it then it creates the queue and then it generates the model and then it gives you a list of priorities it mm -hmm. should not impact them. it will it will consider priorities while uh, preparing a queue yeah good and i've got one question about the the accuracy of the prediction so we saw the model that you you showed um of uh, a feature act, uh, a feature prediction on volumes and stuff like that have you got any or what's your advice on right um any kpis in relation to the accuracy of predictions uh, and if you have and if you do that how does how does that those kpis uh, work to support continued improvement on the predictions See, when you are applying any machine learning model, first of all, that machine learn data scientist would ensure that the machine learning model, the model that they have developed fits to the data and it satisfies certain statistical tests so that it, it fits the data and the predictions are accurate. So typically we talk about 95% accuracy or 99% of accuracy. So, that's uh, so, yeah. so those are the statistical tests you have to apply before before you can put that model into the production and when the model's in production does it meet that then 95 if there's any deviation at all and 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 you know do you manage that deviation or is it just through continual learning 
yeah that's the continuous learning of the model also yeah because yeah. the model cannot be fixed model like the, the model would also continuously learn that's what ai is about yeah. so we have to continuously uh, train the model uh, and if there are certain parameters coming up the model would would actually uh, kind of tailor itself properly so that it fits the data yeah Good. Um, I've got one. I think I've got one more question. Let's just have a little look. Um, this is from Matt, who says, great content, um, Angelia. Fantastic. Um, you started with the service manager slide um, and what they have to manage. But who do you feel should do all the data analytics? Uh, we know this takes up um, a lot of time each week. So where does that where does that data analytics sit, do you think, in that service? No, data uh, data analytics team should be a different team. It's not a service mm -hmm. delivery manager. So yeah. uh, in my current organization, there is a service delivery managers and he has a team of agents and he deals with customers. Here, what we can do is we are supporting service delivery managers. We are giving them different insights. And based on that different insight, we are helping the service delivery managers to come up with the actions. Mm. Good. And last service question then. Managers, service delivery managers cannot make a machine learning model or should not. Yeah. Like, it's not his here. Uh, so that's his skills maybe. So we have a team of data engineer, data scientists yeah. who will ensure yeah. data quality, make a model, deploy the model, create visualizations, which can yeah. be consumed by the service delivery manager. And out of interest, how, how big is that team? Is it expanding? And are you seeing the shift from skills into that team from other other roles? Is there a natural progression from, uh, you know, an operation role into some of that data? Because obviously, as as roles change, then skills change. So instead of losing the brain power, are you repurposing people to go into that kind of uh, new role around data analytics? Yeah, it is possible like uh, they have to learn a little bit on statistics, little bit on data science, mm. little bit on uh, data quality, data governance. So there are so many aspects that the team that they have to learn so, and they already know the domain uh, about the customer and all the domain that they know. So if they can get some more skills added uh, in their thing, they can they can think about moving into this uh, one of the career progression becoming yeah. a data engineer, data Good. scientist, or maybe senior lead data scientist, etc. Brilliant. Well, I'm sure there's, we've got more questions. Unfortunately, we can't ask, uh, answer them all or ask them all, unfortunately, which, which is a shame. But thank you very much indeed for that. There was um, a, some great insight there, um, uh, Anjali, and hopefully we'll get a chance to do this again. Okay, so thank you for joining us and um, good luck. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Good stuff. Okay, um, so we've uh, we've got our next guest waiting in the wings, and before we 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 do that, we've got another poll, uh, yeah, which you'd probably expect, right? Another another quick listen to this poll to do. So we just um, open that up now, which is which is great. Thank you, Holly. Um, and uh, this is about inhibiting. So this is about what what do you think or what do you feel in in your organisation uh, is the main inhibitor to incorporating more process automation in your organisation, right? So that could be anything from a lack of skills, knowledge. It could be lack of investment. It could be lack of vision, strategy, leadership. It could be legacy infrastructure, tooling, integration capabilities, or it could be people protecting their jobs, right? Which which of those do you think uh, makes more sense to you uh, in your organization as, a, as an inhibitor to more process automation? Um, and we'll just give that, we're up to 36%. We'll, we'll try a little bit more again on this one. We'll see if we can get with the 50s plus at least. That would be a pretty good indicator, I think. We're almost there. Just a couple more clicks. There we go. Brilliant. All right. If we if we close that then, Holly, and share it, that would be great. And let's have a little.